Have you ever stopped to think about what happens inside your body when you take a breath? Well, let's explore one of the most important systems in your body, the respiratory system. The respiratory system is a group of organs and tissues that help you breathe. The respiratory system is like the body's fuel pump. Its main job is to bring in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Why is breathing important? Oxygen fuels every cell in your body. During cellular respiration, your body cells turns the food you eat and the oxygen you breathe into energy. It powers your brain, muscles, and organs. Without oxygen, your cells can't create energy and you can't survive. And when your cells produce energy, they make carbon dioxide as a waste product. That's why we need to exhale it out. Functions of respiratory system are number one, moves air in and out of body. Number two, exchanges gases between air and bloodstream. Number three, prevents entry of pathogen and dirt, etc. Number four, protects the body from temperature fluctuation. Number five, helps to produce sound when we speak. Respiratory system provides a route to the air to enter into our body, so it can be absorbed into the blood that carry it to all body cells to produce energy during cellular respiration. Let's learn about which organs and tissues are taking part in this process. So, when you inhale, air enters your nose and passes through nasal cavity. Nasal cavity is an open area between your nostril and the back of your throat. The air is warmed, humidified, and filtered here. This involves shell-like ridges, mucus, and hairs. The purpose of three ridges in the nasal cavity is to slow the air down, which will warm it, help to stay humidified and filtered. They keep the air a kind of moving around in there a little bit longer that help with our sense of smell as well. It can help trap pathogens in the nose. If the air just went straight back down the throat right away, then it would be easier for pathogens to make it through. But if the air swirls a little bit longer, those pathogens can get caught in our mucus and nose hairs. Mucus, of course, is really important produced by a couple of sinuses. Mucus helps lubricate your nasal cavity and nasal hair that helps to trap those pathogens. Nasal hairs you can see, and then microscopic cilia, which are similar to hair-like structures, filter the air removing dirt, smoke, and pathogens. If such stuff gets in there, more mucus would be produced. That's why we have runny nose try to get rid of those pathogens. Now comes the pharynx. Pharynx is the back of the throat that is a junction of two tubes for both food and air to move. One tube is esophagus that carries the food to stomach. The other tube is trachea that carries air to lungs. Pharynx and epiglottis work together to prevent the entry of food into the trachea. Epiglottis is flap-like cartilaginous tissue that closes the trachea while we are swallowing the food. It's going to bend down to cover up the opening of trachea, so the moment that you're swallowing food all goes down into the esophagus. Then the air passes through the larynx, the upper part of pharynx often called the voice box containing vocal cords that vibrates to produce sound whenever you speak. The trachea is a pretty fascinating cylinder tube with rings of cartilage. That cartilage helps support the trachea and keep it open for that air to travel through. Trachea is lined with a layer of ciliated epithelial cells that secrete mucus to trap pathogens and dust from inhaled air. The trachea goes down and splits into two branches called bronchi or bronchus for singular. Primary bronchus on each side enters the lungs and further splits into branches like secondary bronchi, tertiary bronchi, and then tiny bronchioles. At the end of each bronchiole is a little sac-like structure called alveoli. They look like a bunch of grapes. The alveoli are locations where the air ends up going. These alveoli are made of thin-walled cells, have a lot of surface area, and they have direct contact with capillaries so it can exchange gases. Each of these little alveoli are wrapped in capillaries, tiny blood vessels that actually transfer the oxygen into the bloodstream and then take out the carbon dioxide out of the bloodstream so that we can breathe it out. The alveoli are present in millions in each lung. So, they provide a much larger surface area for diffusion of gases into and out of the blood. And of course we have two lungs. 
The lungs are large, taking most of the chest or thoracic cavity. They are soft, spongy, expandable, and light. Each lung has sections called lobes. Three lobes on the right and two on the left. There's a cardiac notch on the left lung where it's a little groove to give the heart some room, so left lung is smaller than the right. The lungs are protected by a cage of bones called rib cage. Some muscles are involved in respiration, including muscles between your ribs called intercostal muscles and a major muscle under your lungs called the diaphragm. These muscles help in breathing. Normally, during an inhale, the diaphragm contracts to pull downward and chest muscles contract to pull open the chest, which helps suck in air like a vacuum, and then during an exhale, the muscles relax, allowing the lungs to spring back to their normal size, pushing that air out. Breathing is automatic, controlled by the brain's respiratory centers. If carbon dioxide levels rise, like during exercise, the brain signals the diaphragm and other muscles to breathe faster or deeper to restore balance. In conclusion, the respiratory system is an incredible network that keeps us alive by delivering oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.